so very good afternoon to you all i welcome you into the industrial pharmacy first Dear student, we are on to the cosmetics, and all these are the topic in accordance with that of the syllabus that is prescribed by the Pharmacy Council of India. So today we will going to discuss uh, the what are the sunscreen preparations, what are the requirements of the sunscreen product, the different types of the sunscreen agents. what are the spfs that is the sun protection factor and what are dental preparations requirement of the dental product formulation and the dental products formulation of the dental product so yesterday we had discuss about the cold creams and the vanishing cream and today we will see some of the screen preparations that is the sunscreen preparation and the some of the dental product dental product are said to be the dentifrices now in order to cover all our lesson plan that will do moves like uh, sunscreen product ideal properties of the sunscreen product types of sunscreen agent how to calculate the spf that is the factor affecting the uh, sun protection factor then uh, dentifrices ideal properties advantages and disadvantages of the dentifrices formulation of dentifrices and evaluation of the same let's move through the slides so as per the sunscreen preparations are concerned these are the preparation that will protect the skin from the effect of the uv light so they will help to protect the skin from the harmful effects of the uv rays in creams lotions and sprays under various brand names these are available like say spf 50 spf 50 pa plus 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 spf 50 that is anti uv and you can see into the particular uh, uh, picture that uh, the rays are there the rays they will not allow to be pass through the skin because of the presence of the layer of the sun protection factors the ideal property of the sunscreen preparations is that they should absorb or filter out the uv rays in the range of 2900 to 3300 angstrom they have a good absorption and the spreadability they should be stable they should be non toxic they should be non irritating they should be free from any side effect and they have low water solubility the low water solubility that is because say in order to avoid their wash out with the help of the perspiration with the help of the Uh, sweat that is going to be formed so that's why these products should be uh, having low water solubility or uh, they should be water impermeable so these are the different wavelengths of the uv rays and according to that they had been classified as uv a uv b and uv c if the wavelength range of the uv that is 100 to 280 nanometer then these are the uv c then if it is 280 to 315 it is uv b and if it is 315 to 400 these are properly called as uv a so the different wavelength and the range of the different classes of the ultraviolet rays in accordance with that of their wavelength so organic uh, sunscreen agents they will reflect the uv light absorption and block the penetration of the uv radiation through the epidermis if the uv is they will get absorbed then they will lead to that of the uh, mutation that is the uh, pyrimidine dimer formation that will occur at a nuclear level in case of the dna for example the agents are the paramino benzoic acid paramino benzoic acid esters benzophenone salicylates cinamates butyl methoxy dibenzoyl methane and the n isotriazine so all these are the organic sunscreen agents 
Some of the physical sunscreen agents, these are the most common and the photostable component of a routine sunscreen product and there is no degradation of the product. Uh, so they will protect the skin by reflecting the scattering of the UV rays and the examples are the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide. So these are the physical sunscreen agents. Uh, in case of most of the cosmetics products, you will going to find the SPF, that is the sun protection factor, that is the factor. So this factor is nothing but the MED of photoprotected skin divided by the MED of unprotected skin. So that is the uh, ratio of these two. So MED is the minimum dose of radiation which produces the erythma and that is determined indoor using xenon lamp which approximate the spectral quality of the UV radiation. So ideal the sunscreen product they should have the SPF value of at least 15. So there are different product with the different uh, SPFs, SPF 15, SPF 50, SPF uh, more than that like say 100 and all. So that means they will be having the factor or the power to protect the skin or these uh, to protect the uh, skin from that of the effect of the UV light SPF. So ideally if you see at least 15 SPF cosmetic product they should have the uh, this particular factor then and then only then they can be called as the sunscreen preparations. So this might be asked in case of the multiple choice questions. So the factors affecting the effectiveness of SPF that will depend on the different uh, uh, skin types, uh, the presence of the melanin, the thickness of the applied sunscreen and the time of the day. So if you see the altitude each thousand feet uh, as it increases adds the 4% of the intensity of the erythma producing the UV radiation. So again the altitude that is most important. Uh, if we see the environment like say snow and white uh, surfaces they will reflect 70 to 90 percent and the when directly overhead water that will reflect nearly 100 percent of the UV radiations. The vehicle that will determine the skin penetration of the skin of the sunscreen preparation. As far as the evaluation of the sunscreen preparations are concerned there are different tests like say photostability, water resistance and some of the other evaluation parameters. So the dentifrices, dentifrices these are nothing but the dental products which are used in order to uh, for the oral hygiene purpose. So the oral healthcare product which are used for improving and maintaining the oral hygiene these are called as the dentifrices. So we'll be having the example of say like toothpaste, tooth powders, mouthwashes, dental floss etc etc if you see among all these the toothpaste that became very very popular although these are some of the expensive products but because of their convenience because of their non-spilling property because of their uh, easy to take out required amount that can be taken out and uh, because of their appearance because of their colors and all these became more and more popular and became the major portion among all the different types of the dental products. So these are very very popular and dentifrices they carry inert and the bioactive substances that helps in maintaining the oral hygiene and provide the cosmetic and the therapeutic benefit. See again the teeth that will perform the part of uh, beauty of an individual. The people with the good shining teeth that will add a uh, a feather in the cap of their beauty. So that's why the dentifrices they had been included into the cosmetic as they will enhance the appearance as they will improve the uh, look the beauty of an individual by uh, maintaining the teeth into the clean and the shiny condition. So sometimes there are uh, um, preparations like say the products, uh, dentifrices or the toothpaste which are general purpose that is generally for the cleaning purpose but sometimes there is a, a tooth decay or there is a dental caries or there is a dental tartar then in that condition some of the medicated 
dental care products or the toothpaste that are also used like the meswak and all right so they will be having their cosmetic effect they will be having their therapeutic effect also in case of the dental uh, problems if the medicated toothpaste are used these are for the therapeutic benefit purpose so no doubt basic aim is to maintain the oral hygiene also so regular dentifrices these are used for cleaning and polishing the surface of the teeth from the from for maintaining the good oral hygiene and they will helps in the formation of uh, in the in they will help in the they will help and inhibit the formation of the unpleasant odors and they will maintain the freshness of the breath so the unpleasant odor again that is not acceptable so in that case in order to uh, keep the freshness of the breath the dentifrices or the regular dentifrices or the toothpaste they will play an important role as i said that there are medicated dentifrices these are for the cleansing preparations and for preventing the tooth decay like say cavities and or other periodontal diseases additional medicaments such as bacterial bactericidal bacteriostatic enzyme inhibiting and acid neutralizing agents are added into these particular products so again the example is the sensodyne that is the multicare dental product so this you can see there are uh, the different parts of the tooth so basically if you see there are two different types of tooth the milk teeth or the deciduous tooth and the uh, next uh, after this there is a permanent teeth the permanent teeth they will remain forever throughout the life of an individual and once they will fall there is no further growth of the teeth the milk tooth they will first they will appear and uh, they will get uh, replaced by the permanent teeth at the around the age of 7 to 8 years of an individual so basically if you see there are different parts of the tooth you can see there is a strong portion which is said to be the crown and this will get covered by the enamel then there is a neck there is a root the root that is fitted into the bone cavity so this cavity that will uh, hold this tooth with the help of a uh, ligaments there is a enamel there is a dentin there is a pulp the pulp is innervated by the blood vessels there is a root canal there are gums this is the bone and this is the particular cement that will holds the teeth into the cavity and through this particular portion the there is a supply of the bloods and the nutrient to that of the teeth so this is the hardest portion in case of a human body and with the help of the ligaments the tooth that can be hold into the bone cavity and that enamel that uh, ligament they will act as a holding material as well as the shock apps of the material so these are some of the structures around the tooth you can see there is a periodontal ligament as i said that this is for holding the tooth into the cavity and it will act as a mechanical shock absorber there is oral mucosa the oral mucosa that is uh, the mucous membrane of the oral cavity there are gums gums that is between the uh, teeth and the uh, bones then there are bone bone that will contain the cavity in which the tooth are hold then there is a nerve and the blood supply the different advantages associated with these dentifrices are that they will deliver the anti active ingredients such as fluorides and the xylitol to help prevent the tooth and the gum diseases and the recent advances into the tooth test they will enable the high efficiency of the oral health delivery so sometimes there is a inflammatory conditions that is said to be the gingivitis which is associated with the gums and there is a periodontitis like say there is a deepen deepening of the pocket and then there is a plaque and there is a calculus formation onto that of the teeth so oral good health that is most important and uh, which no one like or say no to the gingivitis and the periodontitis so that is just by maintaining the good oral health 
or of the tits. So there are some of the special toothpaste for the kids with fluorides, particularly in case of the desensitizing toothpaste and the whitening toothpaste. These are easy to use, available in collapsible tube and in combination of the various contents that are available. Specialized toothpaste that can cause the fluorosis if swallowed consistently in case of the children's. Some they will contain the triclosan and this triclosan it is an compound which uh, combines with the chlorine in tap water to form the chloroform. So which is a carcinogenic in case of the human beings. There are some of the problems like say tooth sensitivity. It is one of the side effect of the toothpaste which show the ability to improve the tooth color. Another ideal characteristic as far as the toothpaste are concerned, the consistency that should be constant. It should not dry quickly and it should not interact with the container part. That is most important. And all these are the ideal characteristic, ideal properties for a toothpaste is concerned. So up till now, what we saw, we saw the sunscreen product, the ideal requirement of the sunscreen products, the sun protection factor, then how to calculate the SPF, and the factor affecting the efficiency of SPF, the different sunscreen agents, dentifrices, and the ideal properties of the dentifrices. Let's see the formulation of the toothpaste, how these going to be formulated or manufactured. The basic ingredient that we require are the abrasives, binding agents, detergents, humectants, sweetening agents, flavoring agents, and the preservatives. Some of these facial ingredients like say coloring agent, bleaching agent, lubricant and the therapeutic ingredient are added in case of the toothpaste and its formulation. So abrasive that is the most important part and that will play an important role in case of the any kind of toothpaste and tooth powder. They helps in removing the stain from the teeth. The gel toothpaste these are prepared by using the abrasives. So the examples are the calcium carbonate, tricalcium phosphate, aluminum sulfate, magnesium trisilicate, and the dicalcium phosphate. All these are very widely used as a abrasives. Detergents, detergents, these are used in one to three percent concentration, and because of their property, that is the foam formation, they can be used in order to clean the teeth. So they have the cleansing action. It helps in penetration of the toothpaste to the deeper tissues and by their emulsification capability, they help in the removal of the mucus. Then you can see there are synthetic detergents. These are widely used surfactants in toothpaste. And few of the examples are the magnesium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sarcosinate, and the diethyl sodium lauryl sarcosinate. Humectant, humectant that is in order to maintain the humidity and to retain the moisture and to prevent drying out of the product. And generally in the 20 to 35 percent concentration they are added. So the most common humectant that is added in case of the toothpaste that is the glycerin or the glycerol, sorbitol and the polyethylene glycol or propylene glycol. The binding agent 1 to 2 percent they are added. Binding agent example is the hydrocolloids. These are used in toothpaste to control the viscosity and maintain the creamy consistency. So hydrocolloids, these are used as a binding agent in 1 to 2 percent concentration. As far as sweetening agent is concerned, the saccharine, saccharine sodium, that is the sodium salt that is used, that will improve the taste of the preparation in the mouth because of their sweet taste. Then they are added in the 0.05 to 2 percent concentration. As far as the flavors are concerned, the different kinds of flavoring agents are essentially used in the toothpaste for fragrance and good feel after its use. The examples are peppermint oil, spearmint oil, clove oil, cassia oil, cinnamon oil, and menthol. These are generally added in case of toothpaste as a flavoring agents. Preservatives, this is most important in order to prevent the microbial growth and these are essentially added in toothpaste to prevent the microbial growth due to presence of gum and water. The examples of the preservatives like say 
para bens methyl para hydroxy benzoate propyl para hydroxy para hydroxy benzoate in the concentration of 0.15% to 0.02% concentration they are generally added respectively solvents the purified water water is the most common solvent that is used in toothpaste in the concentration of 20 to 40 percent some specialized agents these are used in toothpaste as a anti-cavity agent in order to prevent the formation of the cavities and they will prevent their formation the examples like say sodium monofluorophosphate sodium fluoride organofluorides and stannous fluoride these are added in order to prevent the formation of cavities and to say bye bye to the cavities some of the anti tar anti tartar toothpaste so tartar is nothing but the particular property or say the uh, disorder which is observed onto the teeth the dental plug that will continuous accumulation onto the teeth that will lead to that of the yellow staining or the yellow color uh, appearance onto the skin that is said to be the tartar and there are some of the toothpaste which are said to be the anti tartar toothpaste which are used in order to remove these particular products or these particular tartar product anti tartar toothpaste the examples of the anti tartar toothpaste ingredients are the tetra sodium pyrophosphate tspp tetra potassium pyrophosphate tkpp and the disodium dihydrogen phosphate pyrophosphate so these are the anti tartar agent which are included into the toothpaste so as far as the ingredients are concerned you can see this is the formulation for the toothpaste example of a toothpaste preparation the ingredient in the percentage weight by weight concentration so generally the calcium carbonate 56 sodium lauryl percent uh, sodium lauryl sulfate 1 percent gum tragacanth 1.5 percent glycerin 22 percent saccharin sodium 0.1 percent water 19.4 percent flavor in the quantity sufficient preservative again in the quantity sufficient the procedure for the preparation of toothpaste the toothpaste that can be made in stainless steel mixer or planetary mixer or any other mixer used for used for making the semi-solid preparations so this is the general mixer or which is used in order to prepare the toothpaste so generally the method that will consist of the flow like this the first gum and humectant these are mixed with each other then the colloids that will be mixed with the cold water then the ingredient they will be allowed to pass through the sieves and the binder that is going to be added then this mixture is added to the aqueous medium then the flavor is added the detergents are added then that will be stirred well and then you will getting the final product which is to be packed into the collapsible tubes as far as the summary is concerned what we saw in today's talk that is
So this is what that we saw in today's talk. So in summary, if we want to see we, what we saw, we saw the sunscreen product, ideal properties of the sunscreen product, sunscreen agent, dentifrices, and the ingredients of the toothpaste. So with this, we will move with the evaluation part, the evaluation of the dental care product that will consist of the abrasiveness test. So this can be done by the visual observation. The different values, like say the RDA values is relative dentin abrasivity. And these RDA values, these are true for toothpaste product. Like say, if we'll be getting the value zero to 70, that is said to be the low abrasive. If 70 to 100, it is medium abrasive. 100 to 150, it is highly abrasive. 150 to 200, that will be regarded as a harmful limit. Particle size, this can be determined by microscopically or by sieving. The particle size should be ideal in order to provide the good abrasiveness without any gritty fill and to minimize damage to the gums. Volatile matter and the moisture, a predetermined quantity of the product is taken in a dish and they dried till a constant weight is obtained. So change in weight, that is the percentage of the moisture and the volatile matter. Limit test for the heavy metal, the arsenic and the lead, these are the heavy metals. The dental product that are also tested for the contents of the arsenic and the lead, they should be free from that of this arsenic and the lead. Consistency, the cleansing action. Consistency, that is most important in order to avoid their spillage. And as far as the cleansing action is concerned, the tooth that will be cleaned with the help of the uh, toothpaste for a period of, say, around two weeks. And the difference that is to be observed as far as the cleanliness is concerned, that is before and the after through the observation, through the visual observation. pH of the product, a 10% dispersion of the product is made in water and pH is determined. It should be optimum so as not to damage the teeth and the gums. Forming property, a fixed amount of product is mixed in sufficient water of quantity of water and stirred vigorously. The foam generated is then observed for its nature, density, stability and the washability. So that is the forming property. So this is as far as the today's talk associated with the sunscreen preparation and the dental product and their evaluation is concerned. So we had covered today the sunscreen product, ideal properties of the sunscreen product, types of sunscreen agent, dentifrices and the toothpaste.